Alrighty, today we are going to be looking at the multi-user editing uh, system for Unreal, um, specifically how to use that over the greater internet. So, um, so it's sort of designed originally to work over LAN and we're going to be looking at how we can use a VPN to access this from different computers from, uh, I guess, around the globe. Um, so the multi-editor system uh, allows a lot of people connect to sort of the same Unreal project and uh, just move things around and um, interact with things and so you can see what each other are doing and it's quite a fun um, and very fast method of uh, doing that and editing on a project uh, and collaborating together. Um, so this, the way we are going to use that, because this is designed to work on LAN, um, is we're going to be using a VPN. Um, so unlike TunnelBear, Nord, and all those VPNs, we're going to be using sort of our own private VPN to sort of route our um, Unreal Engine friends to uh, one server and so this will essentially mean this VPN allows all of these clients to show up as though they're just on the local network with the server even though they're millions of miles away. Uh, so if my crude diagram makes sense. Uh, so this video is going to sort of be in two parts. We're going to first look at um, how to set up the VPN and then secondly we're going to have to look at there are a few things you have to do to configure Unreal to work properly this uh, like this as its um, automatic detection system does not work with the VPNs. Uh, so we will have two computers for this one uh, so the um, I guess the master computer or the server computer is this one with the Windows background and I'll put a little label at the top and the other one which is going to be our um, makeshift client or clients is going to be the one with the Ryzen background. Uh, so the way we are doing this um, is we're going to be using Soft Ether. So it's a somewhat dodgy website, it's just softether.org um, and so we're going to be using this to create our virtual VPN or our private VPN to use. Um, so when you get on the, there are a few other options like OpenVPN or you can attempt to configure the one built in with Windows but um, this one is just the easiest I found uh, to use and I got it working. Um, so if you just head on over to the download section and download just the first one like that. Uh, so yeah, soft. So for you will want the, the VPN server for the server you're using. Uh, and you want the VPN client for all the clients that will be connecting to it. Uh, so once you get that downloaded, which I've got in this folder here, uh, just go ahead and install it, it's pretty straightforward. Next. Uh, so we just want the VPN server. Uh, nice and easy, next, I agree. Make sure you read all that, uh, don't bother specifying, next, next, next. Alrighty, so uh, we can just go ahead and start it straight up. Alrighty, so we just installed it, and when we open it up, we are greeted with this window, and we already have a um, server running here, so we just can go ahead and connect to it, um, and it's going to ask for a new password straight off the bat. Um, so just give it a new password. I'm just going to call it password, seeing as this is a test. Uh, password has been changed. Alrighty, so then we'll get greeted with this easy setup. Um, so all we need to do is the remote access VPN server and hit next. Uh, and then we, yes, uh, we'll give it a name, VPN. Alrighty, um, you're going to want to remember these things. Um, so just take like a screenshot of it with like the snipping tool. So you can get back to these, but... Um, yeah, go ahead and keep it, because that's how you're going to connect with the clients. You need to know this stuff. Um, yes, 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 yes. Uh, oh, no, exit. Yep, already. Um, so I just enabled the L2TP server function. I don't actually know if it's... Um, necessary but um, I'm just going to keep it like that 
Uh, it probably is wrong or not necessary. Uh, no, I do not want to use the Azure Cloud. Um, alrighty, so next what we want to do is create a user. Um, these are the usernames and passwords for the people who will connect to it and is part of the security so that you don't have just any random kid connect to your uh, VPN. So we're just going to use the password authentication uh, and this looks okay. User has been created, thank you. Uh, exit that. Um, lastly, we need to kind of ch choose which one it's sort of connected to our actual ethernet. So I'm just going to choose my, uh, uh, what do you call it? The plug, ethernet plug, because that's what we're using. Uh, and then I'm going to hit close. And so if I double click on this, I should, I get sort of the settings I can use to manage it. But other than that, everything else should be, yeah, that's all fine. It's operating, everything's running. So that is the, more or less the setup, you know, you just sort of just go through it with it. It's pretty easy. Alrighty, just a quick addition, as I forgot to mention it when I recorded it, but you may need to port forward in your router the um, that first port, port 443. Um, I did have it port forwarded and it worked fine for me. I'm not sure. You may get away with uh, not port forwarding it. Um, otherwise, you will have to port forward it. Um, I would look up your manufacturer for the um, whatever modem you use as it's ver port forwarding varies very differently from each modem. So, we're on the other computer now. Uh, and so, setting this one up is pretty easy as well. We just need to install that client we downloaded. Yes, uh, the client is fine. Make sure you read that. Next, 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 next. Alrighty, now that it's installed, we get the little VPN manager down here. So if we just open it up, uh, what we can do is just add a new VPN connection. Um, we're gonna give it a name. Um, that's fine actually. And we're just gonna enter in the information we have from our other VPN, if you remember, we got it. If you remember here, we got, uh, we said saved it. Um, so I'll go back. So, for the host name, we're just going to type it in. Uh, 991-3340. Oh, no. oh, wrong thing. Alrighty, and it's going to pre-fill the uh, virtual hub name, which is a good sign that we've got it right. Um, and then under the authentication, we can use one of the users we set up before. Like so, and we can just hit OK. Uh, so that'll just add it there, and then we can just right-click it and hit Connect. And make sure you get the password right. I what did I? Do I use it with a capital? Ah, oh, yes, it was with a capital. Um, alrighty. So now that that is done, uh, a quick way to test the VPN is working is if you Google "What's my IP." Um, like that, uh, you'll get a. Uh, IP address, uh, your public IP address, um, and they sh it should be identical on both systems, even though they're not actually on the same network, and that, that's how you know that it's running. So as you can see, both of mine uh, have come up as the same, so I know this one, my laptop here is connected via the VPN. Um, another good way to tell is if you go into your network probably properties, uh, you'll see it now says, oh, if I hover over it, it says that I'm VPN client. Uh, so next is how do we configure Unreal to then work with this. So let me jump back to this one. Uh, so we're just going to 
minimize that. Uh, so if we go ahead into Unreal and we create a new project, uh, I'm just going to do a blank project. Um, multi-user test, there we go, we can just do it as is and we hit create and it should load up, here we go, let's scroll off Steam VR. Alrighty, so what we need to do first of all is enable the multi-user plugin, so we just type in, oh, in here, multi-user editing, here it is, we just tick that, yes, it is in beta, and we just restart the editor, as it says. Alrighty, so now what we need to do is we need to go into the settings, whoops, there we go, uh, project settings, uh, we need to scroll down to the plugin section of the settings, uh, and under multi-user editor, we're going to enable the toolbar. Um, what we will also do in here is just under the display name, we're going to give it a um, a like a name. You can just enter your own name or username, however you want to do it. And we can change the color. So I'm going to make this like a ready purple. Uh, so go ahead and restart again as it's asked. Alrighty, now that that's restarted, we actually have the browse button up here that we can uh, now open the multi-user session stuff. Um, I'm just going to close that first. So for what we need to do is we need to, um, the thing is the, pr the same project, exactly the same project has to be open on both machines to, for it to connect correctly. Um, so for a simple scene like that, we c this, we can just package it up and send it to the other one. But this is where uh, something like a source control, like Git or Perforce, uh, is really going to come in handy to keep everything synced up because, um, although it'll stay synced when you're both editing it or you know your, your whole team's editing it as soon as someone makes a change um when you're not all multi-editing or um someone misses out on a multi-editing session then the, you start again you're going to start getting version mis mismatches so that's where a source control or a version control is going to come in handy keeping everything synced um, but for this example because it's such a simple scene and we only got two i'm just going to package up the project as a zip uh, and we're just going to spam that on the desktop and then I'm going to transfer it over to my other computer and open it up so they're both open exactly the same. Alrighty, so I now have the exact same project open on my second screen. I just zipped it over and then opened it up again. Um, so you're going to have to re, if you zip it at least, uh, you're going to have to redo, uh, not the enable the plugin, but you're going to have to redo the plugin settings. Um, so we're going to go where was it? Multi-user editing enable. Um, this I'm going to give the name of uh, client. Alright, so now we have the browse button in the top. So I'm just going to hit browse and it's just gonna let, let it think for a minute. And we're going to switch over to the server. And so we're going to hit browse here as well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to launch a server on my uh, master uh, computer like that. Uh, and it's just going to open up. Uh, a second window and um, you'll start getting sessions if you don't have any sessions you can just hit here create a new session give it a name and hit OK um, oh it works straight away Alrighty. and so we can just connect to a session like so now over on our laptop or my client um, all the same sessions show up uh, alrighty, and so we can just connect to the same session like so. Uh, so now you can see you have two people. So if I look in the viewport, I should be able to see. Yeah, there it is over there. And same on. Oh, there he is. Uh, so now what happens if you don't have this happen? As it seems to be hit and miss with me. Um, the first time we tried this, it actually didn't show up straight away. Um, but it did this second time around. Uh, so I'm going to show you what you do if it doesn't show up. Um, so if you just leave that multi-session, I'm going to leave it in this computer as well. Alright, so if it doesn't, the server doesn't show up on your client's PC, um, what you have to do is you have to configure the, uh, the endpoints. Um, so what you, to do that, you need to go into project settings and you need to go down under plugins, but instead of going to the 
uh, whereas the instead of doing the multi-user editing, you need to do UDP messaging in here. And so essentially what we need to do in here is uh, if we open command prompt, oh wow, that shortcut doesn't work in Unreal, that's a bit weird. Um, so if we open the command prompt, cmd, uh, and type ipconfig, like so, we're gonna get our I, our local IP address. Here it is, IP for IPv4 address. And so we just want to enter that into the unicast endpoint uh, with a colon and a zero, uh, like so. Uh, close that, and then if we switch back over to our client computer. Uh, we have to do more or less the same. We have to do exactly the same thing. So don't enter the server's IP address. Enter your local IP address. So UDP messaging under here. I'm going to type cmd command prompt IP config like so. And if we have a look, we want to find not our Wi-Fi as that's what I'm sort of connecting to in the local network we want the vpn clients one so 192.168.124 and type that into this one 192.168.1.24 again colon zero like so now so if it didn't if it didn't show up before now if you do it it will show up and so that's how we got around that issue uh, but yeah, other than that, uh, we found VPN uh, is actually quite quick, surprisingly. Uh, we didn't notice any real slowdowns or anything major like that. Um, so look, if I switch to the laptop and we can look at, here we go there, and drag it around. Even though these are on different networks, you get quite a quick speed and so that's how you can use the multi-user editing uh, across the internet uh, yeah so sort of across the internet across plains borders oceans whatever you know and it works surprisingly well um, I haven't tried any other VPN software I know open VPN might work but uh, yeah other than that uh, you know, a lot of, a couple of people have been recommending this, but there's no real tutorials out on how to do this, and it's pretty simple. Um, apparently simpler than I thought, because it worked straight away this time. Um, but yeah. Other than that, that's the, that, um, endpoint fix is the only thing we've had to do to get it working for us, um, sort of over the greater network. But, uh, yeah, other than that, uh, we're done. Cool.